Welcome to Podcasting Smarter, the podcast for podcasters by podcasters. Podcasting Smarter is the official podcast from Podbean, featuring podcasting interviews, best practices, and helpful tips. We're here to give you the tools, resources, product updates, and news to help you get started podcasting and keep your podcast growing. Hello, hello, and welcome everyone to our July live stream for Podcasting Smarter. My name is Norma Jean Belenke. I'm the head of events here at Podbean. And we are so excited to chat with you today. We've got some incredible guests. We've got Harry Morton and Shannon Martin from Lower Street Studios. And we're going to talk all about discoverability, but from a branded side. So they're doing some really cool things with podcast audits and launches of branded podcasts. So we're going to get into it today on the corporate side for podcasting as well. I'm going to read a brief intro and then we'll jump in and get started. So welcome back, everyone, to Podcasting Smarter and our July live event, Branded Podcasting, Amplifying Your Brand's Voice with Lower Street Studios, with Harry Morton and Shannon Martin of Lower Street Studios, as we speak about how to increase your brand's podcast discovery. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, Podcasting Smarter has live stream sessions like this one with top podcasters and industry experts. We also have exclusive recorded episodes on the Podcasting Smarter podcast. This is the second event in our Summer of Discoverability series, where we're bringing you experts, best practices, and tips for how to grow your podcast, whether you're an independent podcaster, brand, or enterprise-level organization looking to get into podcasting. Make sure to check out last month's live stream with Russ Moore of Pacific Content and our upcoming August Live on discoverability for indie podcasters. Podcasting Smarter is brought to you by Podbean. We're a podcast hosting and monetizing platform and home to over 640,000 podcasts. To start your podcast, head over to podbean.com today. And now we'll jump in and get started. Hi, guys. How's it going? Very good. Thanks for having us. We're so excited to chat with you today. So first off, tell us a little bit about Lower Street Studios and the work that the company creates. Um, So Harry, do you want to kind of start us off? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so yeah, Lower Street, we are um, a branded podcast agency. Um, I'm based here in the UK, as you can probably tell, but we're a fully remote outfit, much like Podbean. Um, Shannon's in Spain. We've got many of our producers over in North America as well. Um, and as you said, we, you know, we're producing shows for specifically for brands, a lot of Fortune 500 companies and uh, smaller you know, um, SMEs as well. Um, and really, I guess what we're focused on is, is trying to help brands to, uh, to tell really interesting stories. I think what we've seen is a, a couple of years of an explosion in not just podcasting, but branded podcasting specifically. And I think what that means for a lot of brands is that there's just an enormous amount more competition in terms of um, the shows being produced than there, there ever have been before, which is a wonderful thing, by the way. That's, uh, that's, that, that's just a, a sign that there is a ready and willing and keen audience there. But what I think it means when we're starting out in podcasting for the first time is it's probably much harder to sort of stand out amidst all of those other shows that exist. Um, And so I think a lot of the work that Shannon and the team and I are are really focused on is how do we tell those slightly more compelling stories and and sort of try to encourage folks to move away from the tried and true sort of format of two smart people talking for 30 minutes and and think about how can we kind of build that into something a bit more... um, bit more impactful a bit more engaging and uh so that's some of the some of the work that we do yeah absolutely and shannon i also wanted to ask you you know in terms of the scope of branded podcasts these days you know like harry was saying it's not just two what was it smart people in a mic <laughs> um but you know what what generally is the scope of branded podcasts these days because we're seeing some real creativity right it's not just you know, brand sponsoring things or infomercials. There's a lot of really creative shows that brands are partnering and sponsoring and creating these days. So tell us a little bit about the scope there. Yeah, I think that's really important that it's definitely not an infomercial. I think when we when I talk to people initially, I try to find out what their goals are with the podcast and sort of why a podcast uniquely fits what they're trying to do. And it's really about the storytelling. And, you know, there's a lot of other forms of marketing that they can and are doing. But why a, why a podcast? It's about the conversations. It's about the stories. 
the human stories. So even when we're doing a show that is kind of two smart people talking, you know, we we do a lot of things with narration and sort of helping to craft the story um, to make it a lot more engaging, to get at the, the questions. Our producers are really uh, artful in, in, again, the art of storytelling. What's the arc? Uh, what's a question that they might not have thought to ask uh, that's going to really, you know, engage the potential listener? Uh, and then we're, we're fortunate to get to work on all kinds of creative shows. Uh, we did a fully fictionalized climate series this year that was um, really exciting and um, talking to some brands right now about some things like uh, one is sort of a true crime format around financial things. So there's a wide array and we love to see brands potentially sort of taking a leap into different formats. Uh, but it's really all about thinking about what's going to bring in that listener and keep them because we have so many things we can be doing with our time so much content we can consume. So how is it going to stand out? Why is it going to be of interest to someone? That's that's really what we try to look at with brands. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Harry, I'm sorry, I, sorry. I just think it's so true because oftentimes the conversation we have is uh, you're not just when you create a podcast as a brand, you're not just competing with your competitors. You're, you're competing with anything else that they could choose to be listening to, you know, like Joe Rogan or whatever. Right. So um so it's really important that we don't just think about how do we put out some interesting content, but it's how do we package that in a truly kind of engaging, entertaining way um, that is that is unique to what you can get kind of somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And Shannon, I think you really also had a great point when you were talking about storytelling, right? It's about that compelling aspect of drawing people in. And, and Harry, like you mentioned, you know, getting people excited about, you know, not just, hey, it's us versus other brands, it's us versus any attention that you give any media. So it's just making sure that, you know, the story that you want your brand to tell, yeah, it's aligned with your brand, but it also is going to bring people in, which is super important. And that kind of leads us to the topic of today, which is discoverability. So Shannon, start us off. How important is discoverability and, and what are the main factors that enable podcast discoverability for brands? Yeah, I mean, it's making great content is kind of the always the starting point for us. You know, what is the show going to be about? How is it going to be great so that when people find it, they want to stick around? So that's kind of our our base always, I think. And and sometimes the thing that when we go in and do an audit of an existing podcast, we we find a lot of suggestions around that um, to make sure that they can take advantage of that discoverability. But of, of course, discoverability is important because if no one listens, then <laughs> it probably is not going to meet the goals of the of the company the organization. Uh, but also, it's really important up front for brands to think about, again, what are their goals? Who do they want to get listening? So there's not a generic number that they want to have, like there might be for, if I want to do a podcast and try to become famous and try to grow it and get ads, you know, that's different. I just want big numbers. But for a brand, they may have a very niche audience that they want to reach. Um, so it's about getting the not, it's about getting listeners, but getting the right listeners, that's really important. And that's where formulating the whole show around that is, is key. Um, but then there's a lot of things in terms of how they can be discovered. Uh, number one, just setting up the whole packaging of the show well. You know, when you're scrolling through your app, there's a lot of artwork. Uh, you know, we look at what the artwork should look like, what the title should be. All these things are really important. Uh, and titles are very important. Titles of the podcast and the episodes in terms of discoverability within apps, as you know well at Podbean. And so all these little things are really important. And then we also look at growth strategies and specific uh, things that we'll, we'll get into more. But uh, it, it is important for brands to think about what's the marketing going to be behind the show uh, as well, because it, it, you know, there is an element of, of, of needing to do that kind of thing, needing to be found and needing to put efforts in just like anything else. Uh, it's not kind of, it's not automatic. It's not always easy to go viral. <laughs> so that's, that's something that we need to put some strategy behind. Yeah, absolutely. And we've had a couple people come on Podcasting Smarter and speak about that, how before anybody ever has a chance to listen to your show, the artwork's going to, you know, it's either sink or swim. It's going to bring them in or it's going to repel them and they're going to keep scrolling, right? <laughs> so I think that that's a really important aspect. So, you know, there's a difference between getting that listener and keeping that listener. And in terms of getting that initial listener, you know, it takes time to listen to a podcast. It does, you know, it's not a visual medium. And so you've got to create that visual impression with your graphics and with your artwork. So it is, it is a really important aspect. And I want to jump in now into branded audits because you did mention that. 
So, you know, it's a big one when it comes to making sure your brand message, your content, and your marketing are all aligned. So can you explain the components that go into a comprehensive branded podcast audit? Because <laughs> I think that that's, it's not something that people regularly talk about. Um, and, you know, we'll get into afterward, I want to talk about how it affects discoverability and how you can optimize discoverability. But um, what exactly for everybody out there is a branded podcast audit? <laughs> Well, uh, I would love to tell you. Um, I also <laughs> want to jump back just a little bit because uh, I think the discover bit, I think Shannon, uh, uh, well, you both really raised a, a wonderful point, which is that the, the audiences that we're trying to reach when we're, with a branded podcast is inherently niche. Mm. And we care about the right people listening, not just everybody missing, listening. So I think that when we're talking specifically about branded podcasting, that discoverability conversation is inherently different in that we're not trying to just reach the world. Uh, mm. or the world of people that are interested in surfing, we're trying to reach, you know, probably C-suite execs within Fortune 500 companies, let's say. That's like a quite common thing for a lot of brands that are trying to sort of, you know, they might be tech companies or B2B software companies or whatever. Um, and so uh, the way that we approach things means that we want to be very direct in the way that we reach that, that target audience that we're trying to create. So having that wonderful sort of top of top level funnel of great artwork and great packaging and great positioning and so on is so important. Um, but the ways that we then go about proactively trying to draw people into that is inherently different than it would be if we were just trying to, again, try to be the next Joe Rogan or whatever. And I think that ties <clears throat> really nicely into how we... Uh, sort of run the audit. So the idea with the audit, one of the, the key things that we start with is is firstly, like the point is it's it's an obsession on the listener. So again, what does the who is our listener? Why do we care to reach them? Um, but also, yeah, who are they? What do they already listen to? What are they looking for? Um, what we really want to understand is, you know, what is it that's that's out there that we are competing with for our listeners' time and attention? Um whether that be, again, our competitors or shows on the same topic that we're going to cover, or be it other things that are in sort of unrelated um, areas. So what we like to build up as, a, as the first part of our audit is a, a sort of competitive landscape, um, basically, where we, we're trying to really understand, here's our listener, these are the, the spectrum of shows that they listen to. And from that, we can learn so much, you know, what are the you know, in the shows that are in the same topic as ours, what are the key, you know, the main themes that keep coming up that we see regularly? What are the sort of angles, the topics, the guests that we know are kind of commonalities between those shows? So we say, okay, these are successful shows in our area. Clearly, there are some of these elements that we need to incorporate into our show because that's what the market is telling us that they clearly want. Um, but also what we can then look for are opportunities to differentiate and do something that doesn't exist elsewhere. So what are the things that our audience that we know that they're interested in, that we know they need to to sort of do their job well or whatever they may be? Um, yeah, where, where, what are those areas that aren't being covered on the other shows that we can incorporate into ours to give it some sort of level of differentiation? And, and then we might learn from shows that are completely unrelated, like underwater basket weaving podcasts or something. We can go, okay, so there's this element that's common between our listenership, that maybe that can inform subtly the way that we we think about um, producing our show. And so, as Shannon mentioned, you know, there's you could create a branded true crime podcast. You could create a, a fictionalized show set in the year 2050. And these sorts of kind of creative decisions could be informed by the the, the, the sort of competitive landscape that we build up around the um, around the show. So. Um, Yes, I, I, I could continue on. I'm conscious I've been speaking for a long time, but I think that's the cornerstone of our audit is really understanding what are we competing with and therefore what do we want to change about the show that we've created or um, uh, or create where a show hasn't existed before. Yeah, absolutely. And I think honing in on the niche is a really big part of that, right? Like you were saying, you know, you're not necessarily after everyone who's ever going to listen to a podcast. You're after, you know, like you were saying, maybe it's going to be C-suite executives, of Fortune 500 companies, maybe it's going to be um, underwater basket weaving <laughs> listenership. So I think that's a really good aspect. Um, Shannon, can you weigh in as well in terms of what um, you know what 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 are kind of the the brick and mortar of an audit? When so when a client comes to you guys or when you're working with a client, what does that look like? Yeah. So as Harry said, starting with the listener and identifying that is really important. I think one of the things that uh, it's kind of like a summation, I think, of what Harry said in a way is that what we want to do is create a podcast that is for the listener. We want to create a podcast the yeah. listener wants, uh, not not which isn't necessarily what the person that's coming to us at Lower Street wants or what 
Shannon or Harry wants, you know, out of our podcast, we may not be, we're probably not that target market. So really understanding them is so important. Um, and, and basically as far as the, yeah, the packaging of kind of, okay, what, it, what is an audit exactly? Um, it, it entails conversations, obviously kickoff call with our team, a lot of information that we get up front. So I, I'm speaking as if obviously it's an existing podcast and we're doing an audit of it. Yeah. Obviously it's a very similar process when we launch a podcast as well. So the packaging is kind of similar. We kick off with that uh, essentially after we really understand you know the company the goals we have a lot of discussions around that audience uh, we answer a lot of questions the team goes back and does this competitive landscape analysis this research so it's again very research based not again not just us all kind of thinking, guessing, right. you know, what, what right. might be. It's not a guessing uh, game. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. Um, and then with the creativity, obviously, of our production team to, to say, based on that, uh, here's recommendations, here are best practices. And we are looking at then, uh, we're basically doing a sort of a, a full sort of presentation of all of the recommendations that come out of this discussion and this research that we do. And it can be everything from all the pieces of the packaging um, of the show. So yeah, artwork, titles, you know, how are they doing their descriptions um, and, and opportunities? Um, and then obviously growth strategies, organic growth, you know, what they can be doing better with their social media and their guests. Um, all of that, and then also potentially paid campaigns. So it's it's pretty comprehensive in terms of all the things we might look at: production tooling, you know, just how they're recording, uh, how they're dealing with their guests, all of that kind of stuff. So it can be really small technical things to really large sort of branding formatting. Um, we have I can think of one show that we have worked with that. Uh, had a, an iteration, you know, a previous iteration, and they came to us and they kind of had different goals. So it really changed wholly, uh, it, you know, many ways, kind of the focus of it changed, but we sort of, we did a sort of new style, uh, new artwork, new title, everything. Some are not that extreme. Some are kind of going along and they really just want to grow. And so we're focused more on uh, what are the key elements and then what are the growth pieces. Uh, but in some cases, you know, they're looking at a sort of full rebrand and relaunch. So it, it can vary a lot. It's sort of personalized to their needs. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like, you know, we talk about this a lot here at Podbean, like your average podcaster, your average independent podcaster is not going to have the resources <laughs> of a Fortune 500 company. So, you know, we're really talking about big brand lift, right? We're talking about companies that this may be instead of, you know, running major ad campaigns, billboards, TV spots, you know, because they know that podcasting is going to connect with their target audience and their niche in a really succinct way. So that's really kind of what we're talking about here. And when you think about, you know, oh, well, how much information are they gathering? It's like full market research, right? So it's really important to to remember that. And a lot can go into that, especially today in terms of statistics that we're able to gather, focus groups, all that kind of stuff. So I think that that's a really important important aspect. Um, and, and it even can come down to specific things, right? Like the color of your um, artwork or, you know, specific keywords in your title or description. So, you know, there, there's a lot of very succinct specifics that maybe feel a little bit detailed, but can make a huge difference on the aggregate level. So some an important consideration. And um, Shannon, can you kind of tell us next, you know, pivoting in terms of you know, all these different factors that go into what makes people want to click on a show or listen to a show or subscribe or share it with their friends. And um, because word of mouth is the largest podcast discovery route. Um, but in terms of that, can you talk about, you know, how the audit process directly affects discoverability? Sure. Yeah, it's making sure that it's set up f to be the most discoverable show for the right audience it is, is, yeah. is kind of the point of the audit. But then a big chunk of this audit and what a lot of people are coming, well, a lot of shows are coming to us specifically with the goal of growth uh, when they're coming for these audits. So they're wanting us to run some paid campaigns for them. So a big part of the focus is on that growth. And that is, it might be the paid campaigns if they're wanting to, if they're doing that with us, um, which again, mm -hmm. most of these are, but also it's uh, the organic growth um, piece. So it's, it's again, how, how are they promoting the show? 
and I guess we'll, we'll probably get more into some of the types yeah. of campaigns we run and all of that. But, uh, the marketing of the show and the, the, the potential spend and or organic, you know, is also really important because sometimes, uh, the other piece that the, sh- the show hasn't done up until that point is they've only grown through what word of mouth they've had. Uh, and maybe it's not been as much as they expect. And now they really want to get, do a boost. They want to grow. Maybe they're, you know, they have set it up pretty well. They feel pretty comfortable with how the show is going and the production and all of that. And then we further that with the audit, but then now they want to, you know, take it to another level. So with all the competition out there, getting them in front of the right, uh, people and getting it some exposure is, is kind of the next step that we go to and, and look at, um, there. Cause it's often the, the marketing folks that are involved with the podcast and they're very used to digital marketing, but they're surprised that, wow, our typical digital marketing is not really getting us where we want with the podcast. And you know, and I, I knew this from my work at Podbean and further now with Lower Street that uh, a lot of those kind of standard social media marketing and those kind of things uh, don't necessarily have a big impact on podcasting. So we have to look at some other strategies. Yeah, absolutely. And this is something we talk about all the time at Podbean. Podcast listeners are listening to podcasts and, and we'll get into kind of the specifics of of podcast podcast promotion in a little bit <laughs> which is you know pod pod but uh it's something where you know and, and i want to talk about the specific uh tools uh and strategies that pod, you know you, you you implement for podcasts um and you know in terms of discoverability and creating a strategy you guys do this kind of in several ways right you do it upon launch a company will come to you guys they'll say like okay we want to have a podcast and you're starting from scratch there's nothing you're doing a lot of market research you know you're creating the content um and then from there maybe they come to you and they say okay you know we want to have a full audit but then i've also heard you speak a little bit about condensed audits for branded podcasts so um, can you speak a little, or Harry, can you speak a little bit about condensed audits for branded podcasts and, and kind of the key elements and what you focus on in terms of assessing a brand's podcast effectiveness, um, maybe on a smaller scale or for a show maybe that has launched already that maybe just wants to make some small tweaks or, or pivot in terms of how they capture their audience? Yeah, I think, I think to Shannon's point, it, you know, each audit that, that we do is, is, um, <laughs> kind of unique to each show that we're working on and uh, and so there's i guess there's no one rule um but i would say that typically if we're working with a a, a show who literally just wants to they don't necessarily want to change too much about their show but they want to get more listenership then our audit is going to focus more on that competitive landscape and the and the sort of development of a of a strategy to grow their show whereas if there are they are more open to kind of um working on the production side and the content itself then obviously that means that we're going to kind of that that audit process is going to be more involved as we get deeper into okay what could we change about this content to really make it kind of resonate with our audience better and i think this kind of ties into what you were saying norma uh, norma jean sorry is that we most of the listenership growth is going to come through one well, not listenership growth but the, the most common way of discovering a new show is through word of mouth and as that basically what that means is you have to make a show that is uh, that is that is sort of worthy of being shared. That is shareable. That is that is kind of um, recommendable. Is the word mm. I'm looking for. So we want to think about. Um, so that that really comes into a making a great show. So again, Shannon highlighted a little bit about the sort of production work, and I think that's a really core part of a lot of the audits that we do. Is is like how do we make sure that this show is as great as it possibly can be? Because we can do, we can throw all the money that you want at it. You know, you're a Fortune 500 <laughs> yeah. company, you've got millions of dollars. Let's throw all these this money at this thing. But if you haven't actually addressed, like, is this the best show it could be? Then it's never going to stick, and you're just going to be constantly throwing money for new listeners. But then people will sort of jump ship to the next show much yeah. quicker. So we really want to make sure that thing is is really really good. Um, uh, but then also we want to make sure that we are putting stuff out there that allows our show to make it easily recommendable. And I think one of the keys, and we can get in again, we'll get into tactics in a minute, but I think, you know, video and YouTube is an increasingly important part of the kind of podcast space. You oh, talked gosh. about podcast, yeah. podcast promotions, the P, three P's. Um, I think the three P's is turning, you know, quite a lot of that is turning into podcast, podcast, but also people that choose to listen to their podcast on youtube whether that be by looking at the visuals or just using it as their podcast app um and so i think that what that means is we really want to focus on you know can we make small clips of our show 
to put onto YouTube to make it something that if you go, I really want to share this show with my friend. I think they're really going to love this podcast. Here's a five minute clip of them talking about X topic that I know this friend of mine is really interested in that I've just heard on the show. I I want to go and share that with them so they can check that out. If they like it, then they're going to go and subscribe. And I think that's something we really, that's that's sort of some of those, that ammunition we need to give to our listenership to allow them to share it with other people that they think will like it as well. And this is the third time time I've said Joe Rogan, which is, makes me feel dirty. I don't, you know, I'm not a huge, (laughs) I don't know if I'm the biggest Joe Rogan fan (laughs) of the world, but I I brought him up again. But anyway, Joe Rogan, one of the things that kind of really helped him explode back in his, his early days was his really heavy use of YouTube. He, you know, Mm. you'd have a two hour, three hour long interview, but on YouTube, you'd have these like eight to 12 minute clips of so-and-so celebrity on this particular topic. Um, which made it very, very discoverable in terms of kind of search traffic on YouTube, but also it meant, oh, look, you've got to check this out. Look at this clip of this guy talking about this thing. Um, so that's something I think we can incorporate um, as brands as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, video is one of the hottest topics in podcasting today. <laughs> sure. Right. Is. And I, I think there's there's so much pressure on creators. You know, we talk about, we have resources here, Podbean on video and you know how to make the most of it. And obviously we have auto share with YouTube here at Podbean for hosting and all that good stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But it is something where I think everyone's kind of waiting. Okay. You know, and, and YouTube and the the video, um, I want to say listenership, but viewership yeah. is growing consistently. And it, it's a really interesting aspect as well, because traditionally podcasting has been something that's a secondary medium, right? You're maybe driving or washing right. the dishes or going for a walk And your listeners are still going to do that, right? But maybe you hook them with a short clip that a buddy sends them, right? Exactly. Yeah, because I don't think, you you know, when you're on your daily commute, you're not in discovery mode, right? You're not kind of like casually surfing through Apple Podcasts looking for a new show to listen to when you're on your drive. Um, You've already chosen the shows that you're going to listen to at that stage. But I think when you're kind of receptive to discovery, Mm. then probably the best medium isn't a link to an Apple Podcast show mm. the, the the best thing to send somebody is probably a two to five minute clip of just like a bite-sized chunk that they can go okay i get the sense of what this is is this for me is this not for me um so i think that's something i, I would encourage more people to think about leaning into but you know branded podcasters and podcasters are like you know yeah absolutely and you said something um really succinct being in discovery mode as a listener so i mm-hmm. want to talk about that a little bit Sure. Um, because, you know, when you're when you want to listen to a podcast, when you want to like dive in, I think, you know, as people who work in podcasting, as podcasters, as people with, who work within the podcasting industry, there's times where you want to just like put on a good show. You know, it's going to be good. You're going to put it on. And you're not going to have it's like set it and forget it. That's your mm-hmm. episode for the moment. You're on the drive. You're on the commute. You're on the treadmill. You're doing something right. Um, but then there are other times where you're like, oh, I want to I want to. I'm in discovery mode. I want to figure out, hey, what's new? Are there any good shows? Or I'm, you know, scrolling through the latest episodes of the shows I subscribe to. Nothing's really grabbed me. What else is out there? So um, I'm wondering first, Harry, to just kind of ping back to you. You know, do you have any particular insight on the discovery mode of listeners in terms of behavioral patterns and um, what we're seeing there before we jump into tactics? Sure. Well, I, I, I think one of the things that we have tried much in the past, and I, I've spoken to so many podcasters that have tried this, um, you know, it is, it is tactical, but it's the, when we think about how do we grow a piece of content in general, r- regardless of what platform it is, a lot of times, or at least until recently, a lot of the, the focus would be, okay, well, let's just spend some money on paid social advertising. We'll, you know, we, we know we've got yeah. our really accurate targeting of, lookalike audience on Facebook. We can be hyper-specific on who we want to reach on LinkedIn. So we've got this piece of content. We want to promote it through social, and that kind of makes sense. But I think what we discovered in podcasting is that it doesn't quite work like that. You can't sort of say, you can't show someone an ad um, when you're in short-form social media mode. You're sort of scrolling through your Twitter feed. You're kind of looking for bite-sized short-form stuff. You're not, you're not going to then, it's very, very hard to make that user journey from that kind of behavior to yeah to capture the user yeah i'm going to sit down for 40 minutes and listen to norma gina channon and harry talk for 45 minutes like that's just not like something that we do um so i think we have to um yeah give us give ourselves and our shows the best shot by giving them 
something that suits the mode that they're in right now, knowing that we're not necessarily going to convert them that minute. So if we put a clip of our podcast on LinkedIn, like it's very unlikely they're going to listen to that two minutes. And then again, as I say, go over to, to their podcast app. But if we're putting that out on a consistent basis and people hear that show one or two times, or they are about to set off for their commute and they go, what should I listen to? Oh yeah, I did hear that wonderful clip from so-and-so brand. Let me just plug that in and then I'm going to go um, listen to that on my drive. It's more about the sort of brand awareness, I suppose. It's a sort of slightly slower burn. And what we're trying to do basically is help to spark that word of mouth growth, um, giving it fuel to, to sort of happen on its own, um, as it were. Because if we're, if we're constantly trying to you know, shove our entire 45 minute episode down everybody's throats. That's a very, that's a pretty tough sell. You know, if you're coming in cold, you know, just met someone for the first time, you don't, you don't ask them to marry you straight away. You ask them, would you like a drink? And and then you have a conversation and then it progresses from there. And I think that's what we have to think about as podcasts is it's like, what's our version of a drink? And I think that's probably like a two minute clip. Yeah. And I think also just to kind of piggyback on what you were saying, I think it's something where you want to meet people where they're at. So if they're in scroll mode, What's a scrollable version right. of your podcast, right? If they're in, I want to read short tweet mode, right? Yeah. What's a funny short tweet that sums up your episode, yep. right? So, you know, you don't want to have something that is going to change their experience. You want to have something that's organic and integrates into the experience, Absolutely. whatever medium they're currently on, right? Whether it's LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, whatever that is. So yep. I think that that's a, a really important psychological aspect. Um, and that's for both brands. And I think indie podcasters could probably also... Um, take that on board as well. So let's talk tactics. Um, Shannon, start us off because I think, you know, in terms of podcasting growth and discoverability, there's a lot of different things that companies can do. So um, yeah, let's hear what, let's get us started. Okay, great. Yeah. So all the things we've talked about already, uh, you know, are really important and looking at like the social media strategy yeah. um, and all of these things that Harry mentioned, I think are really key. And um, that's really about, you know, the branding, about sort of the wider play, also really about making sure your community, you tap into your community as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, just for a lot of brands, just letting the people that they interact with know that they have a podcast kind of whether they listen or not can be a really important result. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it can be a nice brand. That, oh, they have a podcast. They're forward thinking. They're, you know, they're talking about interesting things, all of that. Um, so that that's an important piece of it. But then when it comes to sort of larger audience growth and getting sort of significant growth, we also, what we really focus on for specifically for paid strategies are trying to get people when they are in that podcast listening mode. So not the scroll mode, but when they're there and they might be looking for other podcasts I'm always doing it in my app. Like, okay, I'm I'm hearing what people are recommending. I'm looking at lists, things like this. Yeah. But then I'm also looking in my app. Like, I just listened to this. I want more show. You know, it's Podbean is recommending to me more shows like this and all of that. So we we look at a couple of different strategies. One would be things like in app ads with companies like with apps like Podbean um, and others. So that's that's an important one because you're front and center for for people in that. Um, we also have a strategy where we sort of um, drive people to subscribe um, in Apple Podcasts. So we target subscriber, um, uh, you know, followers, subscribers. Um, and, and the other piece I want to mention that I kind of going back to what we talked about before is when we look at numbers and listener numbers and download numbers, the other metric we always look really closely at is consumption. Yeah. Um, speaking to what Harry mentioned before about having the right show for the right people, we want to see the numbers increase. We want to see those people stick as followers, you know, so that, that the strategy we use is, is really trying to get them to follow the show, which means they're, they're self selecting. So yeah. that's really important. But then we also look at what, what level of the show are they consuming? If they're really not, if it's not hitting with them, they're going to drop off quickly. So that's important to that's something we look at in the audit. Um, and then when it comes to growth strategies, we also look at PR kinds of things. So pitching for editorial spots in Apple and Spotify, uh, pitching to be covered in podcast recommendations, there's newsletters, there's articles, there's a lot of things. Heavy podcast users, especially, which a lot of these executives a lot of these target audiences that our companies are looking for are heavy podcast users. Uh, a lot of them uh, are consuming more and more and more content. Uh, so they're looking for these recommendations. So these are places where we can get them featured um, and get them, you know, really highlighted, highlighted what they're doing. Um, so those are some of the strategies. Then also, of course, um, more kind of uh, long, long tail kind of strategy, I guess, would be things like 
cross promotions and host red ads uh, on other podcasts that have a like audience where there's a good match there. And so we do a lot of that kind of work as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we touched on this briefly toward the beginning, but it's something where podcast listeners are already listening to podcasts, right? So if you want them to listen to your podcast, they may not be on Twitter or Instagram. They may be on a podcast that, you know, you can buy advertising on or you can do a feed swap on or, you know, you can target their audience. So I think that that's a really important aspect. And Shannon, you definitely mentioned in-app promos. So, you know, apps like Podbean's listening app, you can absolutely purchase an app placement. And it's something where, you know, you know, when you log in and you see the graphic of a show, like we're talking about, you see the artwork and it grabs you. I think that's a really important um, consideration as well for a lot of brands and and companies that are looking to actively engage podcast listenership. Um, and I think something that uh, is also kind of really fun, like you mentioned, is, you know, when you're on the app and you're in discover and you're in discoverability mode, because we were talking about, you know, kind of finding people in that mode earlier. Um, I think we've all been at a party and somebody says, oh, I listen to this podcast and you open the app and you follow it or you download an episode. And so I think that that word of mouth, it's so interesting because we are in a fully digital world. Um, almost. <laughs> but it's something where, you know, there is still that human aspect and that trust from person to person. Um, so I think that that's a really important aspect as well. And you also mentioned um, with a lot of maybe CEOs or C-suite executives that they listen to more and more content. So don't ever think that your audience is saturated, right? <laughs> I think that that's a really important aspect as well when you're thinking about... Um, when you're thinking about how to capture your audience, maybe they listen to a lot of podcasts already. Um, but I mean, in terms of those heavy users, it's so interesting in terms of the the usership because maybe they're listening um, at more than one times playback, right? Or maybe they're listening or they're reading the show notes and scrolling through and reading the transcript and, you know, re- you know, kind of browsing through the information as they're listening. So it's really important to make sure those things are also updated as well. Um, so we talked kind of about in-app promotions, which is really an, such an important aspect, especially for brands um, that are using storytelling, using podcasts to um, lift their brand and, you know, share their product. So um, Harry, can you provide, or Shannon, can you guys pr- provide specific examples of successful promotional campaigns on platforms that you guys have done and and kind of, you know, how those have run for brands and and you know, maybe what you've gotten out of it. For sure. So I think there's one more tactical thing I'd love to add into the mix that, mm. that uh, might be a, a useful takeaway for listeners that I think is a sp- partic- you know, a specific and unique kind of benefit we have as brands to, to grow our show. So Shannon mentioned, of course, telling our our client base that we have a podcast is just a wonderful yes. or, you know, our user base is a wonderful way of just sort of yes. you know just letting them know that we're creating this thing, whether or not they listen. The other the other massive advantage we have as a brand is we quite often uh, have a huge team or at least a large team. Um, and I think we've been constantly surprised by how much of an impact we can have on the um, the sort of visibility of a show purely by leveraging the, 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 the team that we have internally. We've worked with, you know, Fortune 500 companies, as, as we've mentioned, you know, large management consultants where we've run internal competitions uh, as a specific kind of tactic to 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 encourage folks to engage with the show because basically what we want to do is we want to spike the algorithms inside of apple Podcasts and spotify and so on right within that first week or two within that first couple of weeks to really show them hey this is a this is a, a worthwhile podcast that you should surface to more of your users and so we can quite often folks will send around an email hey we've got a new podcast that's just launched go listen that can get some action but doesn't tend to sort of generate a whole lot of action. So what we have encouraged folks to think about is how can we incentivize them in another way? So we've run internal competitions to say, hey, go listen to the show, leave us a rating and review, um, share it on social media, and you'll be entered to win uh, you know, a nice pair of headphones or a Amazon gift card or whatever it might be. Quite often we found like audio related gifts, like it just feels feels right. We've been phenomenally surprised by how effective these are. You know, when you're talking to like, you know, hyper successful management consultants that can probably afford a $200 pair of headphones if they want to. Yeah. Uh, 
hundreds of them signing up in in droves to to kind of take part in the competition it's been really really successful and i think you know it just speaks to the fact that everybody loves free stuff everyone loves to to win a competition so um they they do uh, they do get mobilized in that and and the impact you can have from just a couple of hundred people leaving a rating and review and and subscribing to a show on apple podcast will give it a real bump in in the in the algorithm and what happens then is you move up the charts you're signaling to, to apple yes, within got this your new niche subscribe. exactly within Just your you genre up, exactly yes. and then you get more kind of organic uh, exposure within them as well so i think that one's a um a, a really good uh, one that that more people should um kind of pay attention to um, so that's what I wanted to throw in the mix. I've now, now going off on that rant, I've forgotten Norma Jean what your question was. So <laughs> you have to ask it again. I apologize. No, no, that's okay. That is, that is a really important aspect in terms of promotion, right? Because when you're working with a company that's a bigger brand, you have those literal human resources, right? So you can incentivize. And I think also, you know, there's a sense of pride from, uh, employees working for a company. Hey, we've got this really cool storytelling yep. podcast. Hey, we've got this true crime branded podcast. You know, we've exactly. got this fiction, global, you know, climate change podcast. And I'm so excited that my company's on board and we're doing this cool creative thing. So mm-hmm. there is that, that there is that sense of pride as well, I think, which is really important. And and absolutely in terms of boosting in the algorithm and discoverability, um, you know, within your genre. You may think, oh, it's only a couple hundred or, oh, I don't know how big a splash we're going to make. But within your genre, you'd be really surprised, you know, how if your podcast just launches or your new season debuts within a short amount of time, that condensed push can really boost you up the up the charts, up the ladder. So that's that's a really important aspect. Um, The question was (laughs) (laughs) um, examples of a successful promotional campaign in terms of in-app promo right. and some campaigns that you guys have run with clients. Totally. Yeah. So we've run in-app promos with, uh, with Podbean and with uh, lots of other platforms that are out there that you can, that you can utilize. Um, what we've seen is that because it's such a direct contact with the listenership in general, right. They're there um, to listen, right. They're there to listen. You know, they're, they're, they're literally in most of these apps, these ads are being displayed within the discover section of, of the app, right? So they're literally looking for new content and you can put yourself front and center. So I think what we've learned from that experience is that you really want to be very hyper-targeted in the language that you use in that ad because it's effectively what you're doing is you're being advertised to every user on the platform, at least generally speaking. Quite, you know, Different apps have different sort of targeting possibilities. A lot of them are geographic-based. Um, some of them are content-based or sort of t- subject matter-based. Generally speaking, you're reaching a very broad audience with these banner ads. So what we found to be the most effective thing, again, because we're speaking about branded content here, not about general content, it's really important that we highlight within the ad who this is for or critically who it's not for. So rather sort of almost counterintuitively, some of the ads that we found to be the most effective are the ones that use language that completely means nothing to anybody outside of the industry. So, you know, for example, a technology company, um, enterprise tech, and we might use just really kind of, yeah, edge computing and cloud this and something else that, I mean, I don't even know the Right. If you're terms, seeing SaaS that, out there, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody's so if, being sassy with you. It's software as a <laughs> exactly. service, right? <laughs> That's right. So if you can just use those almost like um, inside baseball terms, basically, for your industry, Everyone's going to see that ad that's not in your industry and go, what the hell does this mean? Moving on. I'm not interested. And that's great. We want that because we don't want someone that's a nurse listening to our podcast. Right. About Maybe they're going to listen because, for 10 seconds. Right. Back that's off, not going to do. Then, it's right. not going to help them. It's not going to help us. So that's no, no, no harm, no foul. Whereas if we, you know, we use that hyper specific language, someone sees that they're in that industry they're like, oh my God, this is the show for me. Like, this is exactly the terms that I'm talking about every day in my job. They're going to listen. They're far more likely to listen for an extended period of time. That's going to show, that's going to highlight to the app that we're advertising in, hey, this is relevant content. Um, that's going to serve it to more people and so on and so on. So um, I think that's the way that we've seen brands be really successful with it. And I think the other thing to sort of know about these ads is that it, um, what we can't do is place one of these banner ads within Apple Podcasts or Spotify. So we're reaching... Um, specific audiences that use specific specific apps so what this doesn't do is help us rise up the charts in the apple podcast charts for example which is totally great but it means we just have to know that going in we have to know hey we're we're, we're going specifically for the podbean user 
um, user base, which is great because it definitely leans more corporate and more sort of, um, you know, brand heavy um, versus like a generalized Apple podcast audience. But it means that we have to think about how do we, how do we integrate both into our strategy? How do we kind of go for those, um, those kind of businessy audiences over here? But then also how do we make sure that we try to rise through the ranks of Apple podcasts and so on as well, because we do want that high level exposure. And that's where those sort of competitions and some of the other strategies that we use are kind of optimizing for that. So we want to think about kind of both in tandem, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of different apps out there for listening to podcasts for everybody out there listening. And Apple Podcasts and Spotify don't allow um, in-app paid promotion, but they do, you can submit, like Shannon was saying, you can submit your podcast for editorial consideration and then they curate that content. So depending, um, it's something where, you know, you don't have direct control, but everybody can kind of do their best, which I think is is really important as well. Um, and so on the organic side, those are really incredible in terms of packaging, um, like you were saying, with internal and employees on the internet, doing giveaways, doing contests, ask for rating and reviews, doing in-app promo as well. Um, and now I want to talk a little bit about advertising and how advertising can be leveraged to increase discoverability and reach target audiences. Shannon, can you speak a bit about that? Yeah. Are you specifically asking about uh, in podcast advertising? Or just yeah, generally? both. So I want to hear a little bit about the programmatic side because I know that you guys use programmatic as well. And then obviously on the on the paid podcast side, feed drops and all that good stuff. So there's a couple of things um, yeah. I know you guys do. You have a couple of tools in your toolbox that I'd like yeah. to go over. So first, tell us a little bit about programmatic first because I think that that's something that... Um, a lot of companies and even brands aren't aware of in terms of, I mean, obviously there's programmatic audio ads, but there's also mm -hmm. programmatic visual ads. And in terms of discovery, there's a lot that can be done. Yeah. So the, the key thing with that is driving those correct, the correct audience and driving mm -hmm. them. And, and a lot of times that when we're talking about a programmatic strategy, that is one of the tools that we use in terms of these apps where we can't advertise directly. So driving people. So the, the Apple as algorithm, as, as Harry has mentioned, um, really looks at recency of new subscribers. And, and there's, and I think we've done a podcast on this before, Norma Jean, years ago. <laughs> yeah, about yeah we did. Algorithms and, and all the myths that were out there. Um, and then it was yeah. funny because I, right, I think right when we published that, Apple just came out and said exactly how things worked. Like they have it on their page now. And it was right, you know, we were busting all the myths and then they busted our busting of the mess, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty <laughs> so much. They just, they just said they, it, you know. We were, yeah, they, they took the wind out of our sails, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We were like so hacking we we, the algorithm. Exactly. Hacking, yeah, hacking the algorithm. But, you know, it, it's really driving the, those people to, to subscribe. Um, it's a very effective strategy because you want subscribers, but it's also effective because of this knock-on effect of looking great in the charts, which has long-term effects of organic growth, but is also just a great thing for a brand to be able to say, you know, we were the number one tech show. So we have a lot of shows that we are running various of these campaigns for. They're seeing big download increases and listener increases, but they're also seeing this, this charting um, kind of stuff. So they, a lot of them have been number one in their categories. We had one show that we were working with that um, had massive increases in audience and also uh, hit, it was in the top 10 of the all podcasts of Apple podcast charts. Theirs is a bit more of a wide reaching audience uh, than some of these branded podcasts. So it can really achieve a lot of cool results um, there. So that that's one strategy that we take. Um, and I think those opportunities are ever expanding. And it, it very similar to what Harry said about the creative for the in-app ads, the creative on this is really important. And the targeting. These are the things that, you know, we want to look at and not just kind of throw a lot of money, you know, to the wrong, uh, to the wrong audience, um, because we want them to stick and we want them to be consuming the podcast. Uh, but we also do very much look at, uh, host read ads, uh, in, in the right podcast. So part of that competitive landscape that we look at, the other thing that we didn't really talk about is we potentially uncover opportunities in that. So it's not all about, you know, trying to fight the competition in podcasting. As we said, people want to consume more. So it's really about finding out what you're up against, what your opportunities are, but also how we can potentially tap into each other's audiences who might want more content. Um, so sometimes our, our uh, podcasts are running host read ads. You mentioned feed swaps or drops, feed drops or swaps, depending on um, how they're being done. Those are other uh, important sort of you know paid advertising kind of, or, or it can be a swap. 
um, opportunities um, there. So that's something we also look at as well. And that's just, it's really important with those just to be sure that it's the right fit. Uh, and that's more so, I would say, for branded podcasts, for everybody, I guess, in a way. But for branded podcasts, it's really important because they want to, the show that they're going to be featured in to be aligned also with their brand. They want it to be beneficial to them. And most likely, the podcasts we're targeting are also very particular about doing that. Some of them just don't don't want to do that. I mean, they don't want to you know, discuss another podcast on their podcast. They don't want to do sort of any advertising. So you, it takes a lot of effort to sort of hone in on those. Um, yeah, that's pretty most of it, but Harry might have more to add. I don't know. Uh, no, I think, I think you, I think you, you covered it nicely. I think that the most important part we have with any kind of paid, um, advertising that we're doing is, is, is focusing on who the, the, the who, not the how many, that's another thing, but I've said it, um, you know, so really, you know, it's much, much better that we can reach a smaller group of people that are absolutely the right fit for our show versus a much larger audience that, um, that we might, you know, kind of like throwing spaghetti at the wall. You sort of, you know, see what sticks. There is some merit to that, but, but the other, we you know we talked about Apple podcasts is looking at the number of new subscribers you've received in the last kind of period of time to, to sort of uh, determine your chart position. Um, but you know there are they are also looking at other indicators which are effectively just engagement. You know how long are you listening for? So if you you know you, we can shove like I said before, you can throw as much money at a sort of Facebook advertising campaign as you want. You are going to generate traffic to your podcast, um, but no one's really likely to hit that follow button, and they're probably not going to listen for more than a couple of seconds, which are all very negative signals that you're sending to Apple and all these other podcast apps that they could choose to listen in. So instead, we really, really want to focus on the specificity of, of who we're trying to reach and make sure that the language is good and aligned with what they're expecting. You know, we want to set the expectation of if you click this ad and listen to this show, this is what you will receive. So long as we can make sure that we live up to that promise, um, we're much more likely to have people that then spend the time to listen to the show that click that follow button or that subscribe button um, and go on to become, you know, regular listeners. Um so yeah. so yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely and i think you know honing in on the niche like you were just saying and then also that consumption rate like shana had mentioned earlier of you know you don't want people to to listen for 30 seconds you want people who are going to listen i mean ideally we all want people who are going to listen all the way through the outro right yeah yeah <laughs> every single person every single episode um i think that's the that's the ideal um so that's that's a really important aspect and uh just to kind of wrap up i think we've talked about so much today but it's, you know, I think some of the key highlights are really honing in on your niche, finding out where they are, what they're listening to, and meeting them where they're at, right? If they're on Twitter, meet them with Twitter energy, you know, meet mm -hmm. them with a short tweet. If they're on YouTube, meet them with a clip, right? If, if you can get them on the app, you know, you can do um, paid placement on a lot of podcast apps, including Podbean. You can do big pushes on upon launch with your employees with Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So there's a lot of really cool things to do. And just making sure that, you know, your content and your messaging, whether that's from the title to your description to your your artwork is consistent through, uh, through your podcast, right? Like you mentioned, Harry, you're mm -hmm. going to get what we're promising you. So in terms of listening and that content. So um, yeah, I just want to thank you both so much for joining us here today. Um, I think I think we may have time for one more question. So just really quickly, um, are there any common pitfalls or challenges specifically for branded podcasts that that should be avoided, I think, to ensure like uh, an impactful experience for the brand when brands are looking at investing in a podcast? Yeah, I, I think the the biggest um sort of uh you know what's the word i'm looking for i don't know that's the biggest thing to try and avoid mm. <laughs> uh it's early here in the morning i haven't woken up i haven't had my coffee yet um is it is to avoid doing a podcast for the sake of doing a podcast you know there's a lot of sort of me tooism yeah. that we're seeing happening because podcasting has grown so much so quickly so many of our competitors are, are having podcasts so we sort of think oh well we've got to we've got to do it um and i think that that sort of urgency to do it just because will lead us to create something that is probably rather underwhelming and frankly just actually stands to harm our brand more than it does to benefit it. So I would mm -hmm. really encourage folks to think about, okay, do I do we truly need a podcast? Does our target audience, are they the sorts of people that listen to podcasts? I mean, 
probably the answer is yes because all audiences are listening to podcasts these days but you know <laughs> okay so why are they listening and what can what what are they hoping to get from that experience are we in a position to serve them that? And also, what can we do beyond just having two smart people talk for 30 minutes? Because there are few and far, it, fewer and fewer. If we'd started this uh, podcast in this style in 2012, you might have you know, stood a chance of success. But I think if we sit our CEO down with our COO and have them chat for 30 minutes about the products and solutions that they can offer, we're unlikely to find a particularly engaged or interested audience because no one really wants to sit and listen to an infomercial. So I think that if we can be a bit more creative in how we seek to understand and then serve our truly serve our audience. Um, we, we can then find ourselves in a position of having a really engaged and, and fanatic audience. So I think, yes, um, doing it for the sake of doing it and then doing it in a self-serving way are the two biggest kind of um, problems that we have. I think, yeah, the sort of final point I would make is that really as a brand, one of the main really only goals we should have is how can we spend more time with the people that we're seeking to serve and and so um it doesn't matter if we're always necessarily pushing our products and services and and having that sort of call to action all the time um naturally that will take place but podcasting isn't always necessarily best served in the call to action frame instead what we have the opportunity to do is build a really meaningful and long-lasting relationship with our audience by creating something that's really awesome and it's just for them. Um, and they will know that it's, you know, this content that they love and they enjoy is brought to them by this brand. So that will lift their opinion of that brand. That will make them more likely to buy. That will make them more likely to consider using that brand in the future. Um, but that, that will be harder to be the case if we're constantly shoving down their throats our sort of uh, our products and services and so on. So um, Right, that direct push. I think it is more about right. branding and and I love that spending time with the people who engage Absolutely. with your brand and support your brand. I think it, it, podcasting really is relational on all levels. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Really agree. Yeah. Fantastic. yeah, that's and that that's something I think the other pitfall I would say is that when brands come into it with kind of not exactly honing in on their goal, you know, is what we try to do during our process is try to hone in on what what why it why a podcast makes sense and why it's different. And uh, it really is about those conversations. And so that also, the other pitfalls sort of having goals that don't really make sense, that that are just a, a number that someone's kind of come up with that we need X number of downloads or something because for a brand, that's not necessarily, if they're, if they have 500 listeners that are listening every time and are listening all the way through and that are their target market, that's huge. I mean, that, imagine having an audience of 500 people coming to hear your lecture every you know week uh, as a brand. And imagine, and if you think about the amount of time, if it's 30 minutes, how much does that cost in advertising? It's not an ad, but still, if you, you know, to get to spend that amount of time with those key people, it, it's really uh, it's, it's super valuable. And a lot of times the other piece that a lot of our branded podcasts find really valuable is just the people they're having the conversations with is a lot of the return on investment. So Absolutely. it's not actually the listener. Yeah, it's the it's interviewee. The guest. Yeah, yeah. So that's a piece that just I sometimes sometimes companies come in really knowing that and understanding that, but others don't really think about that. They just say, oh, you know, our goal is to get to X number of downloads, but why? You know, what are what are we trying to achieve here? And um, so we see that as well. So yeah, that's there's a lot of things to consider, but uh, it can be it can be a great success, but it really matters how you go into it in the first place, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you both so much for joining us. This has just been so chock a block with uh, just incredible value, I think, for companies and brands out there that are looking at getting into the branded podcast space. Uh, so I'm going to read our brief intro and then we'll wrap up today. Thank you both so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us at Podcasting Smarter for our July live event. Branded Podcasting, Amplifying Your Brand's Voice with Lower Street Studios. Featuring Harry Morton and Shannon Martin of Lower Street Studios as we speak about how to increase your brand's podcast discoverability. For those of you who may have joined us for the first time, Podcasting Smarter has live stream sessions like this one with top podcasters and experts. And we also have exclusive recorded episodes on the Podcasting Smarter podcast. This was the second event in our Summer of Discoverability series where we're bringing you experts, best practices, and tips for how to grow your podcast, whether you're an independent podcaster, brand, or enterprise-level organization. Make sure to check out last month's live stream with Russ Moore of Pacific Content and our upcoming August Live on Discoverability for Indie Podcasters. 
If you join late or want to have another listen to this incredible conversation, you can replay this live stream on Podbean's YouTube channel and on the Podcasting Smarter podcast. We are brought to you by Podbean. We're a podcast hosting and monetizing platform and home to over 640,000 podcasts. To start your podcast, head over to podbean.com today. Thank you so much for joining us and stay tuned for more podcasting tips and best practices in the upcoming months. Happy podcasting, everyone. Thanks, Harry. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you, Norma Jean. Really fun. Thanks for having us. Thanks for joining us for this replay of our live event episode. If you have any questions about podcasting and want to get in touch with the Podbean team, reach out to us at podcastingsmarter at podbean.com. Happy podcasting.